Okay, good day. Core competencies. Core of an entrepreneurship. The entrepreneurial core competencies is defined as the combination of entrepreneurial concept and principles. Entrepreneurial character traits and entrepreneurial skills that provide and become the ultimate source of the competitive advantage of the entrepreneur. The relevance of competencies for entrepreneurship are risk assumption, next responsibility, dynamism, and last troubleshooting. First, risk assumption. Risk assumption is a technique of risk management or better known as retention. Sam or self-insurance under which an individual or business firm assumes expected losses that are not catastrophic but protects against catastrophic losses through the purchase of insurance. First assumption is a person who understands and recognizes the danger inherent in a particular activity. It cannot recover damages in the event of injury in the firm. Risk, assum risk, risk assumption, it simply means that being an entrepreneur, you should always be ready for whatever outcome should be. Okay, let's go in responsibility. Responsibility is... A responsible entrepreneur are a special bread seeking to transform industries and even society itself. It challenge and ref refine culture assumptions, laws and regulations, event and processes of governance. Responsibility it requires them to do and think for beyond what is usually required of business leaders. More overtaking responsibility for what happens to us in life example the entrepreneurs take responsibility for his her for his or her action and results because only if we recognize our responsibility for the acts and consequence we'll have the ability to improve move forward and achieve also the success okay next is dynamism Dynamism, it serves as a market mechanism which entrepreneur efficiently reallocate capital and labor sources from less to more productive uses. Every entrepreneur needs to be dynamic because it's in order to eradicate positive vibes to the team or in the company. And last, troubleshooting. It simply means troubleshooting, fixing, but in terms of entrepreneurship, troubleshooting must be very careful because in her you, will you, fi will you fix yourself alone or your personal problems, but rather the problems of your firm, you should know how to troubleshoot or to fix mistakes for it will lead you in learning not all problems are really there to give you to give you a burden, some are there to teach you like life lessons. And because of troubleshooting, you can learn how to fix some problems in your company or in your team. Okay, that's all. I am Jela Shansintina and my topic is about function of an entrepreneur. So with this, I will be going to discuss and report what about this function of an entrepreneur and their characteristic when it comes to business. So the first function of an entrepreneur is the innovation and creativity. Innovation generally refers to changing process or creating more effective process, products, and ideas. Creativity is defined as the tendency to generate or recognize idea 
alternatives, or possibilities that may be useful in solving problems and communicating with others. Secondly means, in terms of business, this could mean implementing new ideas, create dynamic products, or improve an existing service. If, if there is an adequacy and default to the managing, then you as an entrepreneur can develop or devise on how will you going to resolve the concerns about your business. Then, when it comes to innovation, when you discover something advantageous or beneficial, you can incorporate it to your business. And for example, if there is existing deterioration in your business, you have to critically plan out how to find a remedy to that for ensuring better quality of your business, which creativeness enhance. When we associate creativity and innovation, we have always been recognized as to a sure path to success. Entrepreneurs think out of the box and explore new ideas for cost-effective business solutions. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to be astute or have broad perception. How would you improvise your managing, negotiations, and production system? Not to be complacent, nga kung amo lang na, you could only stick to that technique. No, you must think and act or you'll be bankrupt or failed in your business. Next is risk-taking and achievement. Entrepreneurship is the process in which the entrepreneur establishes new jobs and firms, new creative and growing organization, which is associated with risk, new opportunities, and achievements. In general, entrepreneurs accept different risk and these are the financial risk, social and family risk, and mental and health risk. The first one in the list is financial risk. Most of the entrepreneurs begin by using their own savings in personal effects and if they fail, they have the fear of losing. So, example, in your business, there is a default on loans, debt loans, or delay in delivery of goods or causes by natural disaster or disease breakouts, leading to employee health issues. So the next one is job risk. Job risk, entrepreneurs not only follow the ideas as working situations, but also consider the current risk of giving up the job and starting the venue. So for example, if there's a switching an employee to find that there is an employee that is unreliable with salary payments, like if you have to observe that your employer wasn't accountable to his or her job or not doing his or her job, then it's a risk to be uh, bestowed or trust to that person. The third risk is social and family risk. The beginning of an entrepreneurial job needs a high energy, which is time-consuming. So when you're an entrepreneur, it is very difficult that you will be often away from your family because you will be occupied by so much responsibility of your job that may develop a family conflict because of lack of communication and then your employment-related issues and your compliance to government policy. So that is also a risk to be handled by an entrepreneur. The last risk is about mental health risk. The risk of money, home, spouse, child, and friends could be adjusted, but mental tension, stress, anxiety, and other mental factors have been destructive influences because of the beginning and continuing entrepreneurial activities. So, according to study, the frequency of mental health conditions among entrepreneurs, while there is an anxiety level, which is 59, bipolarity disorder, 3%, Depression raised to 47%, substance abuse 14%, and then burnout raised to 60%. So according to 2014 study published in the Journal of Business Venturing, it found that their serial entrepreneurs displays uh, symptoms of behavioral addictions, obsessive thoughts, withdrawal engagement, and negative emotional outcomes. So when you're an entrepreneur, it is inevitable that we will be facing these types of risks when we are negotiating, but we have to cope up with it. So, when you, if you observe, when you see someone's career is high, then you have they have a bit negative attitude and are strict because due of their job uh, pressures. 
but it can be overcome when we, when the entrepreneurs is innovative, creative, decisive, organized, and strategist. Next is organization and management that to be discussed by my my reporter college, Ms. Carpentero. Organization, a organizational form that includes one larger operational unit with one or few individuals in top management. Entrepreneurial management means the skill necessary to successfully develop and manage a business enterprise. So, a small business startup under an owner manager is an example of an entrepreneurial organization. Here, the owner manager generally maintains strict control over the business operations. This includes directing the enterprise's core management functions. This includes directing the enterprise's core management functions. According to Mitch Burge, this includes the organization. The more concentrated these rules are in the hand of the owner manager. The smaller the organization, the more concentrated these rules are in the hand of the owner manager. So the entrepreneurial organization is generally unstructured. So, what is organization management? Organization management refers to the art of getting people together on a common platform to make them work towards a common predefined goal and enables the optimum use of resources through meticulous planning and control at the workplace. And organization management gives a sense of direction to the employees. The individuals are well aware of their rules and responsibilities and know what they are supposed to do in the organization. An effective management ensures profitability for the organization. In alignment language organization, management refers to efficient handling of the organization as well as its employees. Need for organizational management. Organiz Organization management gives a sense of security and oneness to the employees. An effective management is required for better coordination among various departments. Employees stay loyal towards their job and do not treat work as a burden. So, employees accomplish tasks with the stipulated time frame as a result of effective organization management. An effective organization Organization leads to a peaceful and positive ambience at the workplace. So here the essential features of organization management. Number one, planning. Plan out how you intend to do things. So prepare an effective business plan. It is essential to decide on the future course of actions to avoid confusions later on. Number two, organizing. Prepare a monthly budget for smooth cash flow. So organize, organizing refers to the judicious use of resources to achieve the best out of the employees. And number three, staffing. Recruit the right talent for the organization. Poor organization management leads to unhappy employees who eventually created problems for themselves as well as the organization. Leading The manager or superiors must set clear targets for the team members. In leading, a leader must make sure his team members work in unison towards a common objective. He is the one who decides what be would be right in a particular situation. Control. The superiors must be aware of what is happening around them. The reporting bosses must review the performance and progress of their subordinates and guide them whenever required. And the hierarchies should be well defined for an effective management. In motivation goes a long way in binding the employees together appreciating the employees for their good work or lucrative incentive schemes go a long way in motivating the employees is important and make them work for a longer span of time
And number four, which is research. An entrepreneur is a practical dreamer and does a lot of groundwork before taking a leap in his or her ventures. The selection of an idea thus involves the application of research methodology. So, the purpose of entrepreneurial research is to gather information from multiple fields like company, industry, finance, market, or cost consumer behavior and trademarks or patents in order to create new economic development or innovations. Entrepreneurial research is also helpful for founders and investors to understand the idea behind a product and what method can be applied in order to provide support. Having this information can determine if the idea is viable and how to achieve success. The following categories are helpful framing for entrepreneurial research. Number one, company research. In company research, this includes financial information, brand histories, media attention, news, strategies, and company performance. In industry research, includes industry competition, target audiences, trends, finances, and statistical data. In target market research, consumer behavior includes demographics, psychographics, geographical differences, and communication strategies. In finance or venture capital includes angel groups and business news or research. In trademark or patents includes trademark law, patent law, and information about regulated products and activities. In number five, overcoming resistance to change. New innovations are generally opposed by people because it makes them change their existing behavior patterns. An entrepreneur always first tries new ideas at his or her level. It is only after the successful implementation of these ideas available to others for their benefit. His or her willpower, enthusiasm, and energy help him or her in overcoming the society's resistance to change. Well, all heard that saying that change is always good, right? Wrong. Change is a constant at every organization. But employees have quickly become the number one opponent of change. Most employees won't respond to change with the happiness and glee that is expected. Companies need to understand that there is going to be resistance. Let's face it. People prefer stability and comfort over change in both their personal and professional lives. Though it's much easier to live inside the comfort of normal day-to-day -day life. Change happened, happens and is always going to be something that needs to be handled. Over the past few years, change has become a norm in the business world. Companies that can manage change with ease will have the upper hand over their competition. The top reasons for resistance. Although change management decisions are normally made at the sea level, it's still very important to have the rest of the employees both into the change. Having employees who are opposed to what is going to be changing from the start is a major setback and one that needs to be dealt with carefully in order to be successful with the change management. We have an example, a job loss. It's a meeting to be things moving and changing whether it is due to the need for more efficiency, better turnaround times, or the need for the employees to work smarter. With all these needs comes the opportunity for the company to downsize or create new jobs, and this is where the fear of job loss comes into play. Number two, poor communication and engagement. Communication solves all else, but lack of it creates more of them. This is another crucial ratio reason why employees oppose change. How the change process itself is communicated to the employees is very important because it determines how they react. If the process of what needs to be changed, how it needs to be changed, and what success would look like cannot be communicated, then resistance should be expected. Employees need to understand why there is a need for change because if they are just thrown the notion that what they have been used for a long time is going to be completely renovated where that will come much backlash. 
how to overcome resistance and effectively implement change. Number one, overcome opposition. Regardless of how will companies manage a change, there is also going to be resistance. Companies should engage those who are opposed to the change by doing this. They can actively see what their concerns are and possibly alleviate the problem in a timely manner by allowing employees time to give their input. It assures them that they are part of a team that actually cares about its employees. And number two, effectively engage employees. If there is another piece of advice that a company should take, it's to receive and respond to the feedback that it provided by the employees. The best piece of advice that a company can take in this regard is to be truthful straightforward and timely with big changes in the workplace. Company-wide email and intranets are great tools to utilize and this allow for employees to ask questions and stay informed. Implement change in several stages. Change doesn't happen at all at once. Companies should first prepare for the change, then take action on the change and make a plan for managing the change, and third, support the change and assures that all is going as planned, and communicate change effectively. The best way that you as an employer can communicate change is to explicitly tell employees what is going on. Using a blend of formal and informal communication allows you to ensure that all employees receive the news about the change in some ways or another with all the communication outlets such as emails. And lastly, number five, catalyst of economic development. An entrepreneur plays an important role in accelerating the pace of economic development of a country by discovering new uses of available resources and maximizing their utilization. In this literature, an economist catalyst is an entity that has two or more groups of customers who need each other in some way, can capture the value from their mutual attraction on their own, and rely on the catalyst to facilitate value reactions between them for profit, business, joint ventures, cooperatives, standard seating bodies, and governments operate catalysts. An economic catalyst is an entrepreneur or company that precipitates a fundamental change in business or technology. The role of entrepreneur is economic in economic development. They explore and exploit opportunities, encourage effective resource mobilization of capital and skill, bring in new products and services, and develop markets for growth of the company of economy. In this way, they help increasing gross national product as well as per capita income of the people in our country. A catalyst in the markets can be anything that leads to a drastic change in a stock's current price trend. The most common catalysts come in the form of new, often unexpected information that causes the market to reevaluate a company business prospects. And that's all. Thank you.